In this video, we will learn how to specify, simulate, and verify time transition models, or TTM for short, using the tool TTM slash pet. It is assumed that you have already installed the tool properly. If you have, haven't done so, please refer to its wiki page, which is https colon double forward slash wiki.cse.yorku.ca slash projects slash ttm Once you have installed the tool properly, launch the pet toolkits and go to examples and select the TTM module and you will see the last standard examples of the TTM module is a small pacemaker system we will use this example throughout the video tutorial to illustrate the real-time features and tool support of the TTM pad tool. So this is this area here is the editor uh, for parsing uh, any values uh, for parsing the TTM uh, specification. In this case, for the pacemaker, we specify uh, constants. In particular, the constant multiplier is uh, specified here, and you can set it to 100 for the purpose of verification, and you can set it to 1 temporarily for the purpose of graphical simulation. We will actually see how that works. And we have the decoration of global timers, and in this case, we have only one timer called T, and it ranges from 0 up to HRI plus 1 and it is in, uh, initially enabled, which means its value is initialized to be zero and it is ready to count up with the global tick. And we also declare two global variables to be shared by any modules that declare its use. And we have to initialize both variables. In this case, we just uh, initialize both to be false. And here illustrates the modular structure of the TTM pet syntax. We have uh, decomposed the uh, concerns of a controller, a ventricle controller, and its operating environments, i.e., uh, the human hearts. So we have two modules in the pacemaker example. In the uh, in each case. Uh, the module has an interface section to declare the public variables and it has a local section which declares the uh, variables that the module has the local access to but not other modules. And we also have the events section where we specify a list of guarded events. So for each event, we can specify the lower time bound and the upper time bound for the events and we may specify a guard for the events, and we may specify an action for the events, i.e. the system updates upon which the system, uh, the event will perform. And for each event, if the upper time bound is star, that means the event uh, has no deadline to occur. And the lower time bound means the events will only occur after uh, certain amount of time of its lower time bound once its uh, guard is initially enabled. So that's the uh, heart module where we actually support three events. So the first event specify a natural heartbeat and the second event specify a paced heartbeat and the third event starts a new timing sec uh, cycle for the heart. And for the case of the ventricle controller, it actually has a local estimate of the heart's uh, rate interval. And for each local variable, we are also supposed to initialize its value. Also, uh, in both cases of the ventricle controller and the heart, we also have a PC, local variable, standing for the program counter. And this is the sequencing mechanism in TTM PET to sequentialize uh, the events. For example, you can see that in the event V pace, it only can be taken if the PC is equal to zero. And similarly for V sense, and if any one of that is taken, 
the PC counter will be set to one, and only that would enable uh, the occurrence of the event computer delayed. After uh, each module, so after the two modular module specifications, we have the section for instances where we specify a name of the module instance and the name of the module templates and a list of arguments to be uh, to be passed to initialize each uh, public interface variable. For example, if, if we go back to the heart module, we'll see that the heart is expecting two variables. So one is for pace, the other one is for sense. And whenever if you pass anything to in instantiate pace, it has to be a known variable. And similarly, if you want to instantiate the sense for the heart module, it has to be some global variable of the type uh, bool, boolean. So let's make sure this is uh, actually correct for the instantiation. So we're instantiating uh, the heart module by parsing two uh, arguments. The first argument is to have the shear axis and it is of variable pace. This is correct because in the global share initialization section, we did declare the pace uh, variable. And similarly, we have declared the sense uh, global variable. So both of the arguments pace and sense are valid here. They are known variables to uh, the global context. And similarly, we instantiate the, uh, the ventricle controller by parsing the two required public interface variables arguments. And in this case, we specify the same copy of the pace and the same copy of the sense. And before we can actually verify the system, we have to compose the relevant components together. In this case, we actually make two compositions. The first composition is to compose the heart and the ventricle controller together. And the second one is to make sh uh, and the second one is just the heart alone, just to make sure the heart without a controller can still work. And after the composition section, we have a list of assertions. So before each assertion, we define the relevant state formula. Just for example, in this case, we want to say infinitely often, it is, uh, there are two conditions uh, that should be true. First, either the uh, a natural heartbeat happens or a pace heartbeat happens. And we also have the timer T in the range of BRP and HRI. And similar interpretation should apply to this assertion. And you can refer to the paper for what exactly that means. We want to pay some special attention to this formula here. And this, uh, this is the formula where we want to make sure that time and t0, we want to specify some property about time, uh, time and t0. At the same time, we want to make sure before est uh, establishing that property, time and t0 is not reset or stopped. To uh, specify such property in TTM pad, we support a predicates for each timer variable which is the mono predicates. So in this case, let's look at this assertion here. This is to say, whenever the heart actually takes a new cycle and the time at T0 has just been reset to zero, this implies the following. Before, it is the case that a natural heartbeat or a pace heartbeat happens and the timer T is still in range, it must be the case that uh, T has been monotonically increasing. So this is to make sure before this prop because this property actually depends on uh, the value of time T zero, uh, time timer T. And we want to make sure every time before this property is established, it must be the case that T has not been reset or stopped. And we also have some other similar properties uh, specify in the module. Finally, we want to make sure that because we actually have some events with 
uh, lower time bounds and upper time bounds both being zero, which means we might have the same behavior, which means these events might somehow provide the tick events from happening. So this is the so-called seno behavior. So we want to make sure this is never the case. So we specify some property here saying the system satisfy that infinitely often the tick event just happens, which means there's nothing that will stop the tick from happening. So this is a very quick overview of what we can do in the editor and we also support some static type checking. Just for example, let's say we have a new global variable x of the interval type 0 up to 1 and it is initially set to be 0 and oops, and let's say we go to the inst instances section instead of parsing uh, pace uh, to instantiate a pace in, heart, uh, in the module heart. Let's say we do x and in this case if we try to compile we will actually get an appropriate error message which is that because our, which is we actually have an incompatible types error because variable pace of the type boolean in module heart is actually bound to a variable x of type uh, 0 to 1. So this is just one of the many uh, static, static type checking that we support in TTM pad. So let's just change this back to uh, pace and make sure it actually compiled before we go to the uh, graphical simulation. So we check grammar. Okay, so now everything compiles. Now, for the purpose of graphical simulation, we're going to change the multiplier to 1 just to save some mouse clicks. So, check the grammar. And now, let's go to simulates or F6. Before we do that, we actually have to save our uh, TTM model somewhere because it was simply just directly extracted from the examples folder. So let's just say it's pacemaker.ptm. Okay, we save it. And now we, are ent we have entered the simulation uh, mode. So first of all, from the processes menu I uh, list here, we can, ch we can choose from one of the two uh, compositions we have just uh, constructed, either be the heart alone or the system. In this case, we want to do the system. And we will see that uh, there are a, a number of panels that we should focus, uh, we should pay attention to. First of all, we have the state information panel, which will display the values of the global variables, including the mono predicates for each global timer, in this case, T. We also have the state for each module instances, uh, for each module instance. In this case, we have H of type heart and V of type ventricle controller. And for each uh, module instance, we also display the states for its local variables and the states for each of its events, i.e. whether that's enabled or disabled. In the middle part, we actually have the reachability graph uh, of the whole uh, TTM system. You may click on generate graph to generate the uh, reachability graph, which we can do now. If you click on that, it's going to take, depending on how large your system is, and this is the resulting reachability graph for your uh, pacemaker. And we may reset. And this, uh, let's look at the rightmost uh, panel here. So we have both the enabled events at the current state and the set of uh, the event trace that we have performed so far. So you might just click on that and see how the reachability graph can be constructed on the fly and just uh, by using mouse clicks. Okay, so that's the idea for the simulation. So let's exit from the simulator and let's go to the final uh, feature 
which I, we want to show in this video, which is the verification. So if you click on the verification, so that's the verification panel, and we'll see we have declared so far eight assertions to be validated uh, for the TTM path system. And we have both safety property and life, uh, lifeness property. In the case of safety property, we can actually choose whether in case where uh, a counter example is generated, should we actually get a first one or should we get a shortest one? And in the case of lifeness property, in this case, because we have the eventually or until operator, then we can actually uh, choose which fairness assumption we want to impose on the uh, on the events. Whether we want to say label fair, which is the event level uh, assumption we attach to each event, or no fairness assumption, or we want to uh, impose weak fair to all the events, or strong fair to all the events, or we want to have global fairness, which is a very strong assumption. And here we also have a box to tick on or off to, to say whether or not we want to generate trace uh, witness traces in case of failure. So let's just verify all the properties by clicking on one and hold the shift key and clicking on the last one and let's say verify. And it takes rather quickly for the uh, pacemaker example to verify. Of course, don't forget. Let's uh, don't forget to change the multiplier back to a hundred. So compile and uh, verification, and let's choose all the verification conditions and let's verify again. And. Of course, it's slightly slower than when the multiplier is simply just one. It also depends on how fast your machine is. Uh, the video has been uh, recorded on the Paro desktop version of the uh, TTM pad. So the native machine is not really Windows. So the performance can also be uh, slower than the nat native Windows machine. So as you can see, uh, a detailed report has been generated as the verification proceeds. You will actually see the verification results and for each verification it actually shows different uh, information. Let's just go over them once the verification is done. Okay, let's see. For the verification results, we'll see that first of all which assertion has been validated and whether that's valid or not and the setting that we have chosen uh, fairness assumption or uh, the uh, uh, the witness trace property and the verification statistics is the most valuable thing because it tells you uh, what what uh, what's the number of visited states and what's the number of total transitions of your system and what's the total uh, amount of time used on verification and what's the total amount of memory uh, used in the verification. So we have uh, briefly walked you through the uh, the most critical features of the TTM pad. So if you have any, uh, if you want to explore further, please refer to the technical report that details the uh, semantics and modeling features of TTM pad. Thanks for your attention.